Mr. Armand, do you want to you wanna go first? Yeah? I'll let you. Sure. All right, cool. And uh, by the way, I probably won't share the screen. If you want to, you can turn your camera on. You don't have to, though. If you guys don't have to, but if you want to, you Does can. Does it have to be from the ones that we did yesterday? Or? No, not at all. No, mm -hmm. it could be uh, anything you've uh, uh, learned recently, or maybe it's just something uh, other students haven't heard of. Sorry, my, my mural, my painting is a little weird. Let me move that out of the way. <laughs> okay, so can I share one? Sure, go for it. I'll pull someone's leg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, well, that's a nice one. I like yeah. that. I, I like to use that one a couple of times. What does that? Yeah. What does that mean? Some people may not know it. Pulling. Oh, so it's like just joking around with people. Like if if mm -hmm. you are, like I just usually joke around with people that I'm close with, and I know they're not gonna be offended. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, whenever I'm like with one of my close friends or someone, and I love pulling their leg. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's right. Like, pretty fun. That's right. Yeah, it's like a, a teasing and joking around and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, hey, good example. Is that a new one for anybody here? You've heard that? Uh, I'm just pulling your leg. I'm. Uh, it's like. Yeah, for me. Yeah. I never heard it. It's like a joking with someone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. Oh. I so, for example, uh, it's it, well, you'd be uh, saying something that's not true, uh, but but in the but for the sake of uh, doing a joke. Uh, hey guys, did you hear that? Uh, oh, I did you hear that the uh, the, the, the 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 TOEFL test was canceled for tomorrow? Hey, woohoo! Huh, no, no, I'm just pulling your leg, you guys. No, you got to do the TOEFL test. See, they, they tell you a lie, and then it's a joke. Oh, okay. That's okay. all it is. <laughs> I don't know why Americans say that. I, the, I guess the British say that too, Armand. I don't know. Pull pull your leg. Leg. Yeah. yeah um, I think so. Yeah. I think I've heard them say something like, I'm winding him up or something. Like that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's a little different. All right. Thanks, Armand. Thanks for sharing. Uh, who else wants to uh, share an example of an idiom or a. Uh, Me? Uh, sure. Go for it, Isabel. Um. Take your temperature. Yeah. All right. Sure. Tell me more. Well, what, For that example, mean? if you're feeling sick and you think that you have fever, mm -hmm. you should take your temperature to see if you have any corona symptoms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually very useful. Yeah, it's useful. Right. When, yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 Beautifully uh, expressed uh, example. That's good. Uh, and yeah, your choice of words were. Uh, exactly right. That's how I phrase it in a, uh, together. Yeah. So. For example, today I have an appointment um, with my dentist. Um, okay. Yeah, for my son, dentist. Uh, okay. For my son, um, um, the lady from the front desk, uh, she told me that first uh, I need to take your temperature. Mm hmm. <laughs> To make sure you don't have corona symptoms, right? Or uh, COVID, exactly. COVID symptoms, rather. Uh, okay, well, super. Hey, oh, is, is your uh, appointment pretty soon or are you, you going to need to take off soon or something? Or No, I need oh. to go to the clinic. Yeah, okay. Yeah. All right. Hey, Santiago. Yeah, that's fine. No worries. That, that, was, the, hey, teacher. that was the quiz grade. Hello, hello. So uh, I'm recording all of this and... Um, so I'm not sharing my screen right now. And if you, if you guys want to, you can uh, turn your camera on or just leave it off. It doesn't matter. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, Isabel. Uh, Armand and Isabel have gone. So let's, uh, let's listen to... Mm. All right, Daniela, you've been waiting a bit. Uh, I'll let you share. What's your example of an idiom or a, a collocation? Uh, I don't know if, I, if I'm right. It can be uh, uh, try my best. Sure. Yeah. Tell yeah. Me, what, what, what does that mean? Like you're you're trying to do like the best that, that you can, like mm -hmm. in the best way. Well, I use a lot this expression, like something like with my with my husband, for example, when he wants that I don't know, I organized my clothes, oh, and yeah. my clothes is not organized, and I said like, no, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I, I really am trying my best. <laughs> Yeah, I would I would say it that way too. Yeah, no, a good example, right? You know, you're putting forth your best effort, and uh, yeah, that's the way. I, that's a very common way of phrasing it, right? 
Yeah, so you guys, so if you all just came in, uh, that's what we're doing right now. This is your last quiz grade. You're just sharing an example of either a collocation or a common combination of words that Americans put together, or that could also include an idiom. It doesn't have to be one of the ones that, you know, we've, uh, uh, you know, listened to in a, in a video or, or played on Kahoot. It could just be something that you uh, want to share. Mm -hmm. Another expression that uh, yeah. that I'm hearing a lot this time is uh, "have a good one." Mm -hmm. I would say, but I always hear like, "Yeah, have a good, have a good one." <laughs> yeah, uh, that's right. That's maybe a, a regional thing. That may be a Texas uh, way of speaking. I, I right, have a good one. That is very uh, familiar. Uh, that is to say. Uh, 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 casual way of saying have a good day yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. is it usually used in texas i or think so in canada i think people use it there too sure sure yeah, yeah. i i it may be my, more associated with like um because yeah, have a little good day yeah have, have a good day have a good one yeah one referring to day yeah you, you lived up in canada armand yeah i was yeah. there for three years yeah yeah, I went there for schooling, basically. Yeah. Apparently, they have a lot of cowboys, surprisingly. A lot of people who... Yeah. Isn't that right? Uh, I, I really don't know about that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I, okay. I was, I, when I was there, like, majority of them, I just met like they were students. Oh, okay. It was like a student city, so I didn't like, meet, like see a lot of cowboys. But they're, they're, I think there are maybe in the, in the countryside area sure. for sure. Because there are the countryside there. What 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 city were you in? I was in London, London, Ontario. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah, yeah. throughout from Toronto. So oh, okay, nice. nice, nice. I just visited British Columbia, you know, Canada. I need to go visit Canada one of these days, sir. Yeah, yeah um, yeah, it's it's fun because Canada and the United States, we have never had a conflict politically speaking, or we never had a war. <laughs> Yeah, this is really unprecedented. I don't know why. I don't know why. I guess the United States doesn't want anything that they have, and so we don't have a conflict. <laughs> you know, they have a lot of trees. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, they listen to country music up there a lot, and so uh, maybe yeah, they have their own set of only unique set of English expressions. Danielle, that's a good one, right? Yeah, yeah, have a good one. That's very common way of saying goodbye uh, and have a good day. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah, um, let's see. Picking on uh, uh, you want you want to try to go next, Ms. Gakan, Mr. Gakan. Gakan, oh, what's your example of a of an idiom? Good morning. Hey, good morning. You know, idiom or American uh, expression? I like to use keep in touch, mm -hmm. uh, which is when you meet someone at the first time. Uh, People they are saying each other, keep in touch, uh, don't cut the conversation. Uh, we can see each other next time and as soon as we can. Yes, that's right. You can see each other the next, uh, as soon as we can, right. Keep in touch. Keep in touch. I like to use most of time. Yeah, I like to use this. Uh, yeah, this one. So, so mm -hmm. keep in touch. Okay. Oh, are you saying goodbye? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So actually, it's funny you mentioned that, you guys. Uh, so now that everybody's here, um, letting you guys know, this is the last Zoom meeting that we'll do together this session. Uh, and because uh, tomorrow is your, you know, TOEFL test, and what's going to happen on next week, Monday and Tuesday, I will have some activities available on Canvas. For you to do it's listening comprehension and those will be um the the, the canvas activities will be uh extra credit yeah I'll, I'll apply to either your uh listening class or speaking class which one whichever one you need <laughs> um so uh so that there's so there's that yeah uh, if you have any questions about that you feel free to ask me later on nice yeah hey you know what gakan what you were saying yeah, keep in touch it kind of it reminded me about the uh the one in the kahoot you need a keep a record of all the places you've been remember that you know keeping a record um yeah so keep often is used to mean maintain 
update and maintain, you know, keep a record or keep a log uh, or, or whatever. Uh, it can mean the same yeah. thing. Hey, good example, Con. Thanks for sharing. All right. Uh, Not a problem. Let's see. Going to go next, Edda? Yeah, right. what's, what's your example of an idiom or collocation? Go ahead, Edda. My recently, uh, I learned an um, item uh, recently through watching a, a movie. Uh, it, it's that it is not rocket science. Hey, yeah. great example. Uh, yeah, when I heard it, I feel, oh, this is common, I think. I, I mm -hmm. heard this before because in my country, we use it uh, like a, this is not atom, atom science. Oh, interesting. You don't solve the atom. Don't uh, don't worry about it. You don't solve the atom. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Hey, Gakan, you recognize this expression? It sounds like you're yes, laughing. I did. Okay. Yeah, it's not atomic science, right? Atomic. Yeah. Oh, when wow. I heard this, I, I feel happy because, oh, okay, we're using this uh, kind of same items. Yeah. And it's... after that, I like to use sometimes it is not rocket science. Yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, don't yeah. Worry, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes it's sarcastic. Um, some of your, uh, oftentimes I might use that expression. Uh, first of all, great example, right. Um, I might use that to tease somebody else for um, not understanding something. Uh, for, for example, uh, I don't know how to, I don't know how to get my car started. This is weird. I, this, this car doesn't have a key. It has a fob or something. I was like, I don't understand. How do I, how do I start this car? And then I might, in order to tease, you know, to you know, joke with someone for not being able to figure it out, I'll say, come on, man, it's not rocket science. It's just, you just push the button, start the car. <laughs> so I, I know I, I, you, uh, you, you said you would use it to, to console someone and say, uh, to reassure them. It's like, that's oh, all right. The, the TOEFL test is hard, but it's okay. It's not rocket science, you know. That's a legitimate way of saying it, I suppose. But oftentimes I use it to, you know, ridicule or, or to tease someone for not understanding something that they should know, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't figure out how to use Canvas. Uh, what, what do I do next? Uh, come on, it's not rocket science. Just push the button. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. I actually, tell you what. Let's all say it together. Uh, everybody say it's not rocket science. It's yeah. not rocket science. Come on, you should you should know how to do this. That's that's you usually what know. I mean by that. Or I like I like how you uh, actually atomic science sounds even harder. So that's even, probably even a better one. The, 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 the Turkish way of saying it is even better. All right. For example, when, when someone spends a lot of time uh, to doing something, mm -hmm. we ask, okay, you don't solve the atom. Be fast. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, uh, try that again. You, you don't have to solve the atom. Oh, mm -hmm. you, you should be able to do it more quickly, huh? Because the solving the atom is takes a long time. Yeah, and it is not that hard. It doesn't take a long time. Yeah. There you go. Right. We use it. Good. We we mean it the same way. It shouldn't take you this long. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. Ah, there you go. You're not. <laughs> yeah. Great example. All right. Thanks, Edda. Uh, let's see. We'll pick on somebody else now. Uh, Oriana. Good morning. Hello. Good to see you. Good morning, teacher. Hello. Hey, so, all we're doing is, uh, morning, <laughs> hey, we're all, we're all just sharing our own examples of, uh, of our idioms or American expressions or, or uh, collocations, words that often go together. This is the last quiz grade we're doing, everybody. Just a FYI. FYI means for your information. Okay. Just, just give us 100. <laughs> uh, everybody's going to make a good grade on this one. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's, okay. Yeah, it's all right. Pressure is off. It's not rocket okay. science. <laughs> no pressure. Okay. Uh, hey, that's a good one. No pressure. So, <laughs> uh, actually, no, it's not that one. But, but okay. Good. I'm just kidding. No, uh, no. Something that I use is uh, save money, save time. Mm -hmm. Especially save time. Mm 
Mm -hmm. uh, because when I do something, an activity, or for example, a homework, if the homework takes me, if the homework usually takes 50 minutes, I take like 30 minutes. Like, mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. You usually take so, 30 minutes. Good. So uh, save time, it's something that I have to practice. Okay. A lot, like saving right. time. All right, that's fine. That's good. And actually, it, within your own explanation, you said I have I have to take thirty minutes. That's another example of a collocation. <laughs> I, why do Americans say we take thirty minutes to do this quiz? Aren't we using thirty minutes? Why do we say we take? It's weird. Yeah. And in fact, yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You try to save time by, I mean, by uh, you know, uh, taking a shortcut or or doing something that uh, is a little more efficient. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah, you try to save time by maybe on the TOEFL tomorrow, you guys can save uh, time and yeah. energy by, I don't know, taking notes and by, I don't know. I don't Whatever. know. I think there's not any efficient way to, to save uh, time in the TOEFL. Oh, beautifully expressed. Great sentence. Yeah. Because they don't give us enough time. So <laughs> that's right. There's yeah. nothing to save there. It, there's nothing to save there. Yeah, great construction of a sentence. That was that was good. Good choice of words. That's great. Um, yeah, you're phrasing it much the same way that I would. That's good. Yeah, this is tough. It's like I'm the me and Joe. We're, we're like talking to ESL students who are pretty much fluent. All we're all, I guess we're here to do is just serve as a coach and give you guys new vocabulary words. I guess, but you guys are all virtually fluent at this point. So, um, good. yeah, it's good. Feel, it gets good to feel confident. Uh, yeah. Nice example, Oriana. Thanks for sharing. Um, Thank by the you. way, uh, now that everybody's here, uh, just to let you know after we do the quiz discussion thing, uh, I'll play a video and we'll discuss it together. Uh, it's uh, this. Uh, it's from a student who made a really high score on a, on the TOEFL, uh, and that'll probably be the last thing we do. To be honest, it probably will be. Uh, um, and if you want to, you know, talk to me about something else, but you can. Uh, let's see who's up next. Uh, we'll go with Raphael. All right, let's hear your example of a of an idiom or a, a collocation. Go ahead, Raphael. I'm here. Okay. Yeah. So a collocation idiom. Yeah. Okay. So one time I was watching a a video on YouTube about um, cooking. Mm -hmm. Right, so they were saying how to wrap it up, how to wrap something up. Yeah, good. So we're doing like a burrito, and they were they were saying how to wrap. It. So uh -huh. the other day I was watching this movie, and it was about a school, and the teacher says like, "Okay, guys, just wrap it up. We're about to finish. Like, wrap it up, but uh, wrap it up. <laughs> no, there's, no, there's no burrito." <laughs> Here, so how are you gonna fold something <laughs> here at school? And I don't think you're gonna fold the the, the books. <laughs> Wrap it up have a lot of meanings. One could yeah. be fold. I don't know. One could be just start picking up everything because we're about to finish doing whatever we were doing. So like the mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, some people may not have uh, heard that expression again. It, explain again if if I say wrap it up and if I gesture like this, like come on. So, yeah, so you said uh, if you're doing something, like let's say you're at school or you're just like doing a project, mm -hmm. and your says everybody just start to wrap it up, it means everybody starts to finish the last details of what they're doing because they're about to turn in the project or they're about to finish class. That's right, yeah. You're usually you're kind of uh, approaching the time when you're supposed to be finished. Um, and so, yeah, it's a warning. It's not like, hey, uh, prepare to stop pretty soon or prepare to, yeah. to finish. Yeah, exactly. A hey, good explanation. And you're right. Literally, to wrap up a burrito is to, you know, fold the, oh, the tortilla around the meat or whatever. Yeah, exactly. That has a couple meanings. By the way, it's spelled uh, W R. AP. That's how you uh, spell wrap it up. Because yeah. it's the same word we use for presents, uh, like birthday presents. You wrap yeah, up like wrap, birthday Yeah, wrap the present. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So it means to cover it up. 
I don't know why we say it to mean like prepare to finish. In fact, Americans will start to do this or with their fingers or something like this and as a gesture to communicate exactly what you just said. You might see someone like doing like a, a, a speaking presentation and some guy like with headphones like this, who's working with a camera, he's going, okay, wrap it up. Come on, we're running out of time. Finish your point so we can go to commercial or something. Anyway, yeah, Raphael, excellent example, yes. So everybody say, hey, wrap it up. <laughs> hey, wrap it up. Yeah, wrap it up, yeah, exactly. Yeah, finish, prepare, begin to finish what you're doing because we need, we're almost finished. We need to, you know, we're running out of time. We're running out of time is another one. All right. Hey, uh, Santiago, I'll let you share your example of a, an idiom or a collocation. Okay. Right. Uh, my collocation is the break the ice. Good. Good example. Um, uh, so many times it's more difficult to know some someone or is I using in that case. I, and when I, you break the ice, it's like a losing the shininess. Losing the shyness. Okay. Yeah. Shyness. Yeah, that's fine. So that the other person doesn't don't doesn't feel uncomfortable, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we, man, and we, uh, I don't know. You you manage to capture the their attention. Okay. Oh. <laughs> And it's more easy when I, you break the ice, when I, you uh, mm. uh, share the, the, pers the person or people or whatever. Share the what? It's more uh, difficult. Uh, uh, it's more easy, sorry. Uh, easier. Uh, easier uh, to something or relationship or whatever or talk or, or share the the so whatever okay uh gotcha so yeah, yeah. is is i use that break the ice for the know this to know is know the someone for the other uh, or like this okay yeah um, first of all I, I like your example yeah everybody say uh let's break the ice Let's break the ice. Yeah. So, so the words he's saying, like break, like you B R E A K, and then the ice, uh, like I C E, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, to break the ice. What would be an example of if you and I meet for the first time, we've never met before, how, yeah. how would you break the ice with me? How, how would you do that? Uh, for example, I ask your name. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. How are you? What is your name? Yes. Where Where are you from? There you go. Uh, yeah. What are you, uh, when When are you look the from? Maybe you have the the experience or whatever. I'm from Colombia. Oh, nice. Uh, right. Yeah. You You from like Shakira? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, there you go. Right. We Did find a common one? interest. Yeah. 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 Nice. Right. <laughs> Shakira. So you break the ice. <laughs> Shakira is the best icebreaker, you know, probably for yeah. everybody, right? She's <laughs> fan. It's like, okay. Uh, ex an excellent example of Santiago. That's cool, cool. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, a, a few way, a few times when you're phrasing things, it's a little different than I would phrase it. Uh, I noticed one thing when, uh, when you're, uh, you, you um, what they call those comparatives when you say uh, it's more easy or easier. easier. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that, that's a tricky yeah. one. Cause we have two ways of phrasing things, the mm -hmm. adjectives it's beautiful, more beautiful, or is it beautiful -er? no, it's not beautiful -er, right? Things like, so certain yeah, yeah. words either use more or ER. And sometimes students have the habit of using both, you know, it's, it's more easier. Oh, no, no, you don't, I don't say it that way. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're it's right. a tough one. It's a tough one. Yeah, anyway, that's just one thing I noticed. But uh, other than that, so guys, the yeah. expression break the ice. Has anybody ever heard that before? You heard that before, maybe? Yeah. Um, a good way to break the ice with someone uh, when you first meet is just like what Santiago said ask the person about where where they are from 
The ice is your relationship. When you first meet someone for the very first time, your relationship yeah. is cold, right? Right. And if you, you start to find common interests in with each other, then it, your relationship will warm up, right? Yep. It will cause the ice to crack. It means the beginning of a warm relationship. That's all that means. Right. It's kind of a weird way of phrasing it, but good example, Santiago. Yeah. Thank you, teacher. All right. All right. All right. All right. Good way of breaking the ice is just to uh, talk about your family, talk about the weather. Say, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, you're from, San yeah, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. The very beginning of the relationship. That's good. All right, Salma, you want to you wanna go next? Sure. Sure, sure. And by the way, guys, if you have, if you're more questions about it, yeah, hey, I don't quite understand. Feel free to jump in. This is the practice zone, not the performance zone, okay? We're all, <laughs> we're all learning together. So if you don't understand what's happening or what, don't, what they're talking about, feel free to ask. Hey, hey, what does that mean? Yeah, go ahead, Salma. What's your example? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's uh, get, get cold for it. Mm. And like you're very frightened of something or suddenly become too frightened of something. Mm -hmm. What you have planned or taking step back or losing confidence in doing something. So... Yeah. Um, what, what, is the, what is the expression? What, what would you say? Get cold feet. Oh, to get cold feet. Uh -huh. I, I thought you said to get over it, but okay. Get, uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that's another expression too. Or to, to get cold feet. feet. Tell me more. Uh, when, when would I use that expression? Usually, uh, yeah, if you're frightened of doing something, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, uh, bungee jumping. If you're planning to do, uh, you're going for the bungee jumping, so you're really frightened of that. So you can't oh, do yeah. that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Taking a decision of marriage. <laughs> That's usually, you know, when you're, well, first of all, when you're making the decision. Yeah, usually people okay. make, make a decision. Making a decision. Yeah, that's it, Salma. Right. Usually I use that expression talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She has cold feet. We're talking about someone who might get married very soon, right? Mm-hmm. What am I saying if she, she has cold feet? Uh, uh, I know you've said it already, but go ahead. And, uh, what, well, what does that mean if she has cold feet? Is, does that mean that she's, that she needs nervous. socks? <laughs> she's nervous. No, she's yeah. nervous. Yeah. Right. That's right. So here, let me, let me just yeah, get the Google Doc going. Hmm, weird. Okay. Kind of an old-fashioned expression, but that's it's still something people use today, yeah. Usually in the context of getting married, the man or the woman, off, to be honest, it's usually the woman uh, when we're using this expression, but uh, it's like she has cold feet. This is what uh, Miss Salma was saying. Um, ever, her, her, anybody ever say this before? That means... Uh, she uh, is uh, nervous about uh, getting married. And oftentimes it mean, might mean that she's thinking, oh my God, maybe I shouldn't get married right now. Maybe I, it's the day before the wedding. It's like, oh, maybe, am I making a mistake? Oh crap, oh no, you know. And she's reconsidering maybe getting married, right? Um, then I would say, oh yeah, she, she it's okay. She has cold feet. I usually use this expression when I'm reassuring someone or I'm, I'm just telling the, the bride to be, it's like, listen, it's okay. It's a very natural feeling to want to run away right now. It's very natural. It just means you have cold feet. <laughs> it means you're not really wanting to not marry the man. You really do want to marry him. It's just, you're just naturally nervous. So it's usually used as a, a, a reassuring thing. It's like, it's okay if you're doubting right now. It's a very normal reaction. It's okay. Yeah, I think it's still a wise decision to get married right now. So that's, 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 what, you're, that's what you would say whenever you uh, use that expression. Usually in the context of marriage. Yes, yeah. But I guess I could use it for other things too. Like you're about to... But to join the military, I don't know, mm -hmm. that's weird. <laughs> that's often marriage. Salma, great example. Thank you. Cool. Sorry. 
Oh, I keep forgetting I have a microphone. Am I shouting? Am I am I yelling at you guys? Can, am I too loud? <laughs> <laughs> no. am i am i yelling no, in your no, no, no you're not yet no, it's perfect. okay okay good good i just realized i can't hear myself and so net people naturally speak a little more loudly all right try all right, to right. yell to see how it sounds uh, oh i don't want to scare my wife she's in the other room <laughs> she'll hear me yell yeah, no. Uh, help <laughs> no uh all right scarlet do you want <laughs> what's I that think the microphone won't let you sound like it will adjust the volume you're right. Zoom is very good about that, right? They'll they'll naturally, you know, select for volume. That's right. Probably so. Uh, yeah, in fact, I've tried to play music. I play a guitar while I'm singing on a Zoom meeting, and the only thing that comes out is my voice. It naturally suppresses other sounds. It's weird. Scarlett, let's hear your example of a um, uh, of an idiom or a collocation. Let's hear it. Okay. Uh... When I was uh, preg uh, pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, I want to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to know uh, I have a boy or I have a girl. Mm -hmm. uh, but however, in China, according to the Ch uh, Chinese legal, uh, doctors cannot uh, disclose the, the baby's gender. Mm. So, the uh, so the doctor uh, beat around the brush mm. uh, to say, uh, Either a boy or girl. That means uh, if it's not a boy, uh, then it's a girl. But uh, she <laughs> said not not a uh, uh, Kanyani. I see. That's good. So she's beating around the bush, huh? Ah uh, yes. Uh, because uh, in China, uh, some people still have an uh, uh, bush bush uh, abortion. 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 Because of the baby's gender. That's right. Yeah, usually, if it's a if it's a girl, they'll abort the pregnancy. Um, yes, and more people that still like the the boy. Yeah. Uh, apparently, it's it, it used to be the law, right, to only have what two children in China. Is that right? Yes. No. But not no. anymore. No. Yes. Yes. You but can the have before, before oh, one parents just to have one child. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Scarlet, that. I understood you really effortlessly. That was really good. You know, I mean, um, I think it, yeah, your English is getting much, much better. I mean, uh, of course, when you listen back to this recording, you'll you'll notice. I mean, uh, uh, the flow is a little halting here and there, but that's that's just going to get smoother and smoother the more often you speak. I I gotta say, your English has really improved. Uh, here's what I heard you say. Yeah. So uh, in a, in a, when you were pregnant, you were talking about yourself. Yeah. You. Uh, you went to the doctor and you wanted to find out if it was a boy or a girl according to the law uh, not according to the legal but uh, according to the law uh, the doctor is not allowed to yeah, tell you right yes. yeah so basically it is illegal it is illegal uh, to the doctor is my mother's uh, friend because my mother also is a doctor so they are uh, works in the, the the same hospital really so uh uh but she, uh, when I go to the doctor, I, 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 I um, because uh, she, uh, because, because there are uh, other staff, other uh, doctors nearby, so mm -hmm. she can't uh, talk me the Kanyani as boy or as girl. Uh, okay, she's trying to uh, be careful not not to say it around other yeah. people. Yes, I see. Gotcha. I, you know what? Uh, the the um way. Another way of saying kind of what you're saying is uh, she uh, is trying to be uh, discreet. Oh, God, I hope I spelled that right. I know you guys can't. I know you can't see what I'm saying. Reading here. Uh, let me share my screen. Um, there are other uh, there's other people around and she wanted to try to uh, be a little bit more secretive about this private information that you that you're right. Is that kind of mm -hmm. what? You, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's trying to be discreet, um, meaning like keep your privacy, keep her private, private information private. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, and I, I even I like the way you were phrasing things too. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was something that stuck out. Um, so oftentimes, uh, even though you uh, uh, people in China have the freedom to have as many babies now. As they want. Uh, I think that's right, right? 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. Some people still choose to have an abortion if uh, if it's a girl. Is mm -hmm. that right? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. And so that's one of the reasons they they uh, they don't reveal that, I guess. But to... so she was beating around the bush. Good expression. Hey guys, uh, did, I think we talked about that one yesterday, right? Did we, you guys remember that beating around the bush? Not speaking directly, right? It's like uh, yesterday we learned it yesterday. Oh, that's that right? It was it yesterday. Yeah, cool. You speak in dark. Definitely. Sorry. Oh, okay. Um, so I guess the way she was beating around the bush is like, uh, is it a boy or a girl? Uh, let's say it's um, it's uh, it's not a boy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I guess a way of speaking around it, right? Not speaking directly. Yeah, she's trying to be uh, discreet, maybe uh, a little more uh, private with your information. Scarlett, great example. Yeah. Good, good. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Uh, if you don't, if you don't mind me saying, I mean, you're a you're a you're a mom, right? You got kids, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah, two. You got two kids? Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what? Uh, uh, how how old are your kids? Eight and a five. Is that right? Oh, that's fantastic. Eight is uh -huh. girl, five is boy. Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> My family had a boy and a girl together. Yes, I was I was I had one sister, and that was a great mm -hmm. combination. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was good to have a sister growing up because I know what, you know, I know the mind of women a little bit better when I was a young man. <laughs> she was, my sister was a good teacher, you know. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful. Uh, thanks for sharing. Uh, let's see. Let's go to the next person here. Jamie, I'll let you share about, I think, Jamie, you're the last person. Really? Yep, I think you are. <laughs> what's your What's your example of a of an idiom or a collocation? Okay, there is an idiom that is an ocean gets filled up by one drop at a time. Wait, wait, say say that again. Be, an ocean gets filled up by one drop at a time. Oh, okay. It basically means that no obstacle. Is too big for you if you keep, if you keep having patience. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Filled up one drop at a time. At a time. Yeah. No. Yeah. I got you saying the ocean gets filled up one drop at a time. Uh. Okay. So. So this is an expression. I, actually, to be honest, I, I've never heard an American use this. But, but go ahead. Um, yeah. Go, because. Uh, I also think don't think so. American use this because it's basically uh, it's Indian idiom. Love it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. But but yeah. if you if uh, you want me to give an example, I can give you one. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're just, I'm just learning about this new one, so go ahead. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, when would you use this expression? Yeah. Okay. So basically, uh, my daughter. Uh, were doing her project and she making a rush mm. and she got frustrated. Mm. How, uh, however, the, she stopped doing it because they, she, she threw that it would not come out well. So then mm. at that time, I explained to her the, that the key to success is always be patient. Mm -hmm. If you, uh, for and I told her, for example, if you want to achieve something in your life, you have to take one step at a time, uh, not all step together. You cannot go anywhere by taking all step at a one time. You have to to take one step at a time. And yeah. for being that kind of person, you can achieve your goal. Nicely said. Yeah. You know, to be honest. One step at a time. That's probably the more common metaphor that uh, that Americans would use, but um, that's that's communicating kind of the same thing. Please be patient. It feels like the end, your goal is very far away, and you're trying to encourage this person, right? Yeah, from, yeah, from, yeah. Who feels like, gosh, I, I'm losing my patience. Yeah, you're, you're giving a, an excellent example of a proverb. Proverb is a little short saying that's about wisdom, you know. The ocean yep. gets filled up one drop at a time. Oh, I like that. Yeah. 
Um, one step at a time. Basically, in, in my my language, it says "tipe tipe sarovar barai." All right, <laughs> that's my home home language. Ah, uh, nice. It, it kind of uh, it uh, it it flows a little easier. You know, to be on, I've heard this um, other example of a proverb that I guess Americans would use. It's a version of "one step at a time." Uh, uh, the journey of one thousand miles. You, you, you let me know if you've heard this before. Uh, begins with uh, one step, right? The journey. Yeah, might of, be. I, I I heard these things one time in mm. your class. Oh, my class. Oh. Yeah. A, third, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Okay. Yeah, might be. Might be. I I learned this thing. You told us that things mm -hmm. in my second. Second time you apply. Great, good, good. You know, I, I like this proverb. You know, I immediately understand the meaning anyway, even if Americans use it or not. That's a that's a good piece of wisdom. Be patient. It will eventually you'll eventually reach your goal. All right? That's that's good. Uh, and oftentimes Americans will use this one step at a time, or maybe I would say, remember that expression yesterday? Don't put the cart before the horse, right? <laughs> You know, don't, yeah, don't, yeah, yeah. don't skip a step, you know? Yeah, so it's kind of an yeah. encouraging thing. It's like, take your time. They, they, yeah. they relate you to each other. They yeah. Go, my uh, micro work, do one step at a time and uh, don't put a card. It's just, just like a similar uh, thing. Sure, sure, sure. No, I, I like this. I've, uh, I'm learning more and more about uh, uh, the, the uh, other people's uh, way of phrasing things. I like that. Ocean fills up one step, uh, one drop at a time. The journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. Yeah, that's kind of how it means the same thing. Guys, did I get everybody's, uh, looks like I did. Okay, so I have recorded this.